live here from Cuban Square. One of our students got selected for uh, the job opening which I posted last week for Red Hat OpenShift engineer. So he got uh, the interview call, he has completed the first round and he called me to update the status. And also he shared me the interview questions as well. So I'm just sharing those uh, to this forum so that you can also prepare accordingly. So they were testing the candidate not just on Red Hat OpenShift, rather uh, it is about uh, the open source Kubernetes, the DevOps tools, the CACD pipelines, and all those aspects. So the question started from the basics. They wanted to understand how the candidate has the understanding towards OpenShift and Kubernetes because their application is not just running on OpenShift alone. They haven't migrated everything to OpenShift alone. They have their applications on Kubernetes and also OpenShift. So the question started with what is the difference between Kubernetes and OpenShift and what is the candidate's understanding? So what is the difference between the OpenShift project and Kubernetes namespace? Because in Red Hat OpenShift project, we have a concept called project template, which is not available in uh, the Kubernetes namespace. Then the difference between deployment config and deployment of Kubernetes. In what scenarios do we go for deployment config and why not deployment? Then what is uh, the major difference between uh, Red Hat OpenShift route and Kubernetes ingress? When do I need to use that? Can I use both ingress and uh, OpenShift route over here for a particular application? Then there are a few commands around uh, OpenShift CLI. Uh, it's not that from the interview perspective, we need to go and talk about uh, the entire syntax of the commands because it's all about uh, using the help option. But just to see whether he has a basic understanding, whether he has used the commands on a day-to-day -day basis. The commands, simple uh, questions were like, what is the command to list uh, the running pods? What is the command to filter a specific status of a pod? What is the command to show the labels of a pod? What is the command to describe your objects? How will you check the logs of a particular application? All these things with respect to OpenShift CLI. Then what is an image stream? Why do you use that? Because, see, image stream is one of a very important object in Red Hat OpenShift. It is specific to Red Hat OpenShift and it, I mean, it tracks the changes to the container images and enables automated deployment triggers. That is more important, right? Whenever there is an update on the image, this will capture and trigger the automated deployment. There is no manual intervention at all. So that's where the image stream comes up. So the question is whether you have used that. If that is the case, in what scenario did you use that? Talk about PVC and PB. When do I use that? Do I use for monolith or do we go with for microservices as well? Then on uh, the deployment strategies to understand what are the different deployment strategy of use, whether it is rolling update alone or do you uh, use blue-green deployment and canary as well. In what scenarios do you go for blue-green or canary? The network policies and troubleshootings and all these things. And after that, slowly the question started evolving towards uh, the bit more sort of L2 level of interview uh, questions wherein they wanted to test the overall perspective. See, when you join as an OpenShift engineer, it's not that you'll just go and open the Red Hat OpenShift console and start deploying your applications, no. It's not that you create a namespace, network policy, resource quota, or limit ranges, or write an YAML, and do it everything within the cluster itself. No, you will not get confined to Red Hat OpenShift alone. You will be working on different tools, different DevOps tools. You'll be working on the pipeline so that the final stage of the pipeline will be deploying on Red Hat OpenShift. So you'll have to understand all those nuances as well. So the question was regarding, have you configured GitOps pipeline and Argo CD? Have you done some or have you managed deployments for a core banking application in a multi-cluster OpenShift environment. See, it's not mandatory that you need to have a banking level domain experience, but they are trying to understand if given an application to you, 
how will you handle this using Argo CD? So the expectation from the candidate is, hey, have you worked on the objects like deployment, service, ingress, secrets, config maps, and all these things. And if you talk about customize, you'll be happy enough because using customize on Red Hat OpenShift, you will be able to deploy, make configuration changes easily across multiple environments like uh, development, test, production, test, and others. And this customize is actually added as a part of Red Hat OpenShift DO280 4.14 syllabus in uh, chapter one. So there they have detailed clearly about uh, customize, base, overlay, and all these concepts. Then how will you handle the network isolation and security between applications? Because here they are talking about the core banking and payment gateways. So when I have two different applications, how will you work on the network isolation? How will you handle security? So the expectation is, have you worked on network policy? Do you know how to control the traffic? Do you have hands-on experience on service mesh? If you have worked on service mesh, can you talk about Istio, which will help to manage the microservice security? Then talk about the RBAC as well, role-based access control, right? So when there is a question around all these concepts, all these OpenShift objects and other tool comes into the picture and you are supposed to talk about all these pointers. Then have you set up a pipeline to build it, to test and deploy, uh, let's say, your payment gateway application, for an example. And then mainly, how do you manage the image versioning? That is another biggest headache, right? Uh, managing your image version whenever you build your application. How do you do that? So how do you use OpenShift image streams for managing the applications? How do you use customize? Have you worked on CI, CD? Right? And then secret management. That is more important. Right? When you try to connect to the external payment gateway, of course, that is more important. Security is important. Secret is important. Let's say with respect to Cuban Square, for payment related stuff, we connect to a external payment gateway. So from Cuban Square, when we connect to the external payment gateway, what sort of secrets are being involved? What is the API token uh, being mentioned? In which file have I mentioned whether that file is has been encrypted enough? So can you talk about secrets? Can you have you worked on any uh, HashiCorp vault? Have you worked on any TLS, MTLS? Talk about those things. And then HPA, they wanted to have the horizontal pod auto scale it so that they can maintain uh, in a high availability. So talk about that. Can you tell about HPA? In what scenario have you implemented HPA? Is that when you deploy an application, immediately you go and apply the HPA or when there is a need, you go and apply the HPA. Can you talk about that? Can you tell me what are the optimization scenario you worked on? What are the optimization you have done with respect to the resource allocations? Can you talk about the namespace resource quota? limit ranges, vertical pod autoscaler. Have you fine-tuned JVM parameters? Have you done some uh, or fine-tuned the container settings for Java-based applications? Have you done that? Then high availability and disaster recovery. So I worked on multi-zone deployments, that is more important. So if one zone goes down, how do you handle the other one, whether that goes automatically? Have you configured pod affinity? Right, pod affinity is a rule to spread the pod across the different zones. So have you worked on that? That is more important for high availability. Then service load balancer. Can you talk more about service load balancer? How do I get the uh, static IP address? How this works on a cloud provider environment? If at all, if I don't have a cloud at all, how the load balancer work on the on premises, for an example, uh, MetLab, sorry, MetaLB. How do you just work on that? Do you have any disaster recovery strategy in your project? Hey, can you talk about that? Then the image, I mean, finally, as like uh, I would have explained this in the job description also, finally, they'll be touch facing on the troubleshooting and the resolution standpoint. 
It's not that you have to provide the right answer and error alone. The expectation is how do you narrow down to the answer? How do you narrow down to the root cause? What are the areas you start narrowing down? What are the logs you will be checking at one by one? What level of questions you will be keeping to the developers or QA team to drill down and understand what exactly the cause of the issue is? Can be image pull back off, cache flow back off, application not working, operator is failure, node outage is fine. How do you probe it? How do you drill down exactly? What are the different commands you try to understand? Have you used any logging related applications? What are the monitoring tools you use to verify all these things? Such sort of interview questions has been shooted to him. It is from, I would say, L1, L2 and L2.5. At that level, they have shooted the questions. He has completed the interview questions and now waiting for the second round. He got selected in first, now waiting for the second round. In continuation to this, I mean, uh, in the uh, next session, I'll be talking about Red Hat especially because when I'm releasing several videos and blogs with respect to DevOps, Red Hat OpenShift, Red Hat Ansible, Red Hat Linux, Red Hat OpenStack, most of the students and non-IT resources have a question to me to understand. Hey Gomes, can you tell me what exactly Red Hat is? We all know about Red Hat Linux. So can you talk about or can you help us understand what are the other products doing really with Red Hat? So can you give me some examples? So in my next sessions, I'll be talking about Red Hat and different products from a layman perspective with some examples. Thank you all.